Coming up. I'm going to take you back in time. This is a store, but it kind of looks like a museum. Here we'll find artifacts from World War II all the way up to present day. Collectors won't want to miss this. Personal trainer Martin will show us a quick and effective warm-up. We'll try healthy Greek cuisine fit for summer and find out what happens when you don't drink enough water. All of that and more is today on SoFlo Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and it may look like I'm in a toy store. Well, I'm not. I'm actually in an antiques and collectible store. And whether you're into the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or today, or you would like coins, war memorabilia, movies, trading cards, vinyl records, it's all here at Way Back When. It's not just a store. In fact, you can learn a lot while you're here. It's almost like a museum. And you can even sell or trade what you have if you're trying to get rid of some stuff and you're like, who would care? And the answer is, they will. And we'll learn more later. But first, watch this. Martin Gelbspan has a warm-up for us. In fact, if you were paying attention to SoFlow Health the last couple of weeks, you would have seen an upper body workout and a lower body workout. We actually warm up on the show before we actually film those. So in this case, we decided we'll show it to you. All right, so what we're gonna do is three different movements for the warm-up. Okay. We're gonna try to get the entire body warmed up. So the first thing we're gonna do is called the world's greatest stretch. So we're gonna start on the ground. What I want you to do is I want you to pull your arms back Put your hips back, you're going to bring the right foot right next to the right hand and you're going to rotate and rotate, 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 come back down, bring the right foot back mm -hmm. and now bring the left foot forward, same thing, I want you to rotate, exhale, bring it back down. So you're warming up the hip flexors here, you're warming up the hamstrings, thoracic, upper back, a little bit of shoulders. So you're trying to get the entire body warmed up before you get into the exercise. All right, now let's walk it back. Good. Next one, since I know you have tight hamstrings, <laughs> like everybody else out there, yeah. everybody that sits down, they have tight hamstrings. We're gonna place our hands on the ground uh -huh. and we're gonna bring up the hips and come back down one more. Ooh. Good. And the last one we're gonna do is a little bit more technical. Okay. It's called the wave unload. Okay. So. We're gonna get into that same position we did for the first exercise. And what I want you to do is, with your arms extended, okay. start pulling up your hips, bring the knees all the way back, feel it in the hamstrings. Start pushing up with your arms, bring the hips forward, 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 and then bring them down. Keep your arms extended, look up, exhale. Tuck the chin in, push up with your arms, bring the hips up, and then back and down. So you're kind of like rolling your spine up? Your spine, exactly. You're warming up the entire spine. Okay. And that was the warm-up? That was the warm-up. If you guys want to do that two times, you definitely could do that two times just to warm up a little bit more. Yeah. But they're usually tough exercises too. Yeah. But you warm up the entire body and gets you ready for the exercise. Yeah, I'm feeling loose. I'm feeling warm. So that's a little bit of a sneak preview of what we do behind the scenes before we make the workouts with Martin or anybody else in the show. We do think that warm-ups are important and this is just one of the many that you can do. Morgan's shown you some in the past. The important part is that you do it. Remember when I said they have war memorabilia? Well, it's right over my shoulder. But if you want to bring it to more recent times, you've got garbage bale kids over here. And on this side, you can get beer taps, all sorts of different things to find here. And later, we'll meet Joey, and he'll give us some advice on how to start collecting, if that's of interest to you, or what to do with the stuff that you have lying around. But first, watch this. Welcome to Estiatorio Ornos. It's a Mediterranean Greek restaurant right here at Aventura Mall. I love Mediterranean diet and Mediterranean food in general. So let's go inside, meet Danny, taste, and talk. So we're getting started a little differently here because this is on fire and I want to know why. Yeah, it's a flaming cheese. It's a saganaki, um, typical Greek preparation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you sear the cheese and then you flambe at table side with a little Greek brandy. Mm -hmm. And you chef, a little sweet finish. can you introduce yourself for us? I'm Danny Galvez. I'm chef de cuisine here at Estatorio Ornos. All right, well, thank you so much for having us. This is just one of the many things that you have here. And 
Of course, this is SoFlo Health, and we love Mediterranean food. There's a whole reason behind the Mediterranean diet. It's because the majority of what you can get in that cuisine uh, is fairly healthy for you. And if you just look at this table, you can see why. So uh, tell me about Orno and uh, what it is that you have here. Uh, we specialize in uh, fresh fish, obviously, being a Greek restaurant. Um, we do have a couple selections for like lamb, like lemon chicken. Here we have the lamb chops that we do really well, but as you see, we have the fish for two, and then we have a raw preparation of fish, that's a salmon, tuna, and yellowtail, mm -hmm. a fresh sauce of parsley and lemon, capers, all mm -hmm. the typical flavors, you know, lemon, parsley, capers, it's in a lot of our, our food. And then right there you have a melon salad, which right now in summer it's really refreshing. Yeah. You know, you get a little mint, you get a little citrus, the feta cheese has a little saltiness to it. And yeah, it's healthy, there's not, that much things that are going to be bad for your body or your health. Yeah. Just, you know, and you got a little sweet stuff over here, baklava and our little true Greek yogurt to yeah. finish up. In fact, I made a comment when we first sat down. I, I was saying that even the desserts look fairly healthy <laughs> compared to a, yeah. a lot of other cuisines. I mean, it's like everything. It's you pick and choose, right? So like our baklava does have some butter between the layers. Yeah. But then our, our Greek yogurt is a Greek yogurt with honey and dried fruits right. and nuts. So, right. you know, it's like you, what do you want to do? You want to get a little butter? You yeah. want to go a little bit healthier? And the whole menu is kind of that way more like on the healthy side for sure. That's great. I'm actually going to get uh, some of this here. Now, what am I about to bite into here? This is our Greek uh, sea bass. We call it lavraki in Greek. And it is starts off on the grill and then it's finished off in the roast in the oven. Mm -hmm. And we have a vegetable called briam, which is kind of like a medley of vegetables, like a ratatouille, but the Greek wow. version of ratatouille. It's well, yeah, yeah. very delicious, uh, and it's so fresh for summertime, especially. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of which, I'm actually gonna steal some of this here. That uh, is tell me about a favorite this. of both the staff and the guests. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, the staff love this uh, salad. It's a melon salad. Usually it depends too what's good. So I get with my produce guy and I ask him, hey, what melon is good this week? And he'll tell me canaries are looking good or sun-kissed melons are looking good, whatever it is. Right now I have honeydew and cantaloupe. Yeah. They're kind of the better selections for this week, but mm -hmm. it changes sometimes and it just depends what his availability is, but the melons are great right now, so. Yes, and it's very good and we talk about it on SoFlo Health quite a bit that when you're making snacks at home, like these are the sorts of things that you can get inspiration Absolutely. from. Absolutely. But of easy. course, uh, it's way easier just to come here or a place like this and to uh, taste it for yourself or get the ideas here and then try to recreate sure. it at home or talk to the chef here. I'm sure he'd be happy to help Absolutely. you out. Well, chef, thank you so much. I don't know what to try next, but I'll figure it out and you can keep watching SoFlo Health. Find out what happens to your body when you don't drink enough water after the break on SoFlo Health. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and you might be thinking, what the heck does antiques and toys, what, what does that have to do with health? Well, there's actually a really big community aspect around it. I think that it gets people talking to each other, you get to learn about different parts of history, and believe it or not, this is a little part of South Florida. In fact, right next to me, there's a signed football from Dan Marino with one of his original trading cards, and you can probably find that here in South Florida a lot easier than, say, in Detroit. So, it, there is is a so flow aspect to it. The health part, I think it's just the community aspect, but later we're gonna talk to Joey and you'll really see how that is the case. But first, watch this. On SoFlo Health, we have said the word hydration plenty, but why is it so important to be hydrated? Well, while I fill up this glass of water, I will tell you that it's very important to stay hydrated. Firstly, because you want to keep your joints lubricated. Long-term dehydration could hinder the shock absorbing aspect of your joints, and that's not good. This next one's kind of gross, but it's necessary. Drinking enough water helps your body produce enough mucus and saliva, which can help keep your nose, mouth, and eyes moist and warm, and it helps you with digestion and tooth decay. If you like being oxygenated, then you will drink enough water because that helps your blood stay fluid and carry the oxygen throughout the rest of your body. Being properly hydrated also helps your skin stay protected, moist, and helps prevent premature wrinkling. Nobody wants that. Drinking enough water also cushions the brain, spinal cord, and other sensitive tissues, and being dehydrated can lead to a, a decreased brain function. 
Another aspect of drinking enough water is helping your body stay regulated when it comes to temperature. Of course, this water will turn into sweat once I drink it, and that helps you stay cool, especially in the summer heat. So there you have it. Make sure that you're getting plenty of water, especially during the summertime, so that you can stay hydrated for all the reasons we just listed. This is Joey of Way Back When. Joey, tell us, what's Way Back When? Way Back When is basically a collectible oddity antique store, all in one. All in one. All I can in see one. we've got all sorts of things around us. Tell me, what do you find here? Oh my God, you will find everything from your past, and when you walk through these doors, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you remember. <laughs> everything, everything. That's great. And what do you think separates you from, uh, say, comic book stores or other similar places? I think it's the uniqueness of the store. Mm -hmm. So when you walk through the doors, like I said, you're gonna see stuff that a lot of stores don't have. You're gonna see from military to oddities to antiques. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see from vinyl records to rock and roll memorabilia, even sports and toys today. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that whole one-stop look at one store that has everything for you as a collector. Yeah, well, th that's sort of the fun part about being in here. It's almost like it's a museum. Yes, and I, I try to do that as well when I opened this store up seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So I want you to feel that I'm gonna take you back in time. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the uniqueness of the store. So you could feel comfortable as a collector or non-collector, but you, I'm gonna make you remember. And that's yeah. the whole great thing about it. Something I noticed from being around here is that um, everything seems to be like hand-picked. There's not a bunch of commercial stuff that's being made in a factory somewhere and you're just disseminating those products. It, this looks like you curated this like a museum. I wanted you to come into the store to feel that, hey, there's Star Wars here from mm -hmm. the 70s and 80s, or hey, I'm into currency and coins. Yeah. So I want that collector to feel good about their collection, small or big, yeah. but it gives you that freshness of a store that's unique like us. That's great. And yeah. one thing I, I think it also does, because you have such a broad um, time span that you cover here is that it gets a lot of people involved in meeting each other and being able to share history, um, which is a, a great community to be around. To be able to have your kids here, have uh, uh, older people here, and just people of all ages, and kind of mix and say, hey, well, when I was a kid, this is what we were into, or you know, vice versa. It's true, is that it, it, young or old, mm -hmm. so there's no preference. So when you walk through these doors, the same thing, I want you to come through these doors, mm -hmm. and I want you to say, hey, dad, or hey, mom, or your brothers and sisters, or uncles or aunts, that even your grandparents parents will walk in here and say, yeah. I had that. Well, there's plenty to see, but let's start with your favorite part. Do you have a favorite spot? In I do have a favorite spot. It's right over here. Let's check it out. Okay, so what part is it? Oh my God, the best part of this, what I love the most of my store is probably gonna be this universal tribute pictures of Boris Karloff. It's from Frankenstein. And the uniqueness of this is from 1990s. They only made 9,500 of these. And the benefit of this one here is, is that you have a Boris Karloff autograph, Polaroid from 1950s, uh -huh. and this is the man himself. So this is a, a model of his head, like almost like a model scale kit. Yeah. And the uniqueness of it, if anything ever happens, this is gonna come with me. Very cool. Uh, that's the best <laughs> and you've got 152 of, of the 9500. So that's pretty good. Oh my God, yeah, it's one of the best <laughs> pieces in my store. All right, well, there's so much more here to see, so stay with us for more Soulful Health. Joey shares some bargain hunting tips. Start looking in your own home all the toys that you have in your closets. And Morgan talks outdoor gym etiquette when SoFlo Health returns. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. This is Joey, and we are at Way Back When, which is an antique and collectible store that also has records and plenty of other things. Joey, where do you get the stuff from? I get it from you guys. As a collector to a collector, you guys come into my store, and that's the benefit, because when you bring the stuff in, it's the uniqueness mm -hmm. of what we get our items from. So a lot of people always say, where do you get it? It's from you guys. Mm -hmm. So when you bring your stuff in, that's why we're so different from other stores. You are our buyers and sellers. So we actually have fun just putting new stuff in our mm -hmm. inventory. And besides here, where's another good place to go on the hunt? Is it garage sales and stuff like that? You, you have your garage sales out there. Estate sales are getting very popular right now. You can actually Google estate sales in your area. You can actually go to Goodwills, Salvation Army, strip stores, or even mom and pop stores in the area. Yeah. So every city has one. It's just you gotta take the time and just go hunt. All right, well, I'm gonna stay on the hunt here, and you, watch this. 
Hey guys, Morgan Shapiro here back at the gym, but not just any gym. I am at the local park gym here at Markham Park. And today we are going to go over one of my favorite things, gym etiquette, but at an outdoor park. So now all outdoor parks are not the same. Equipment is not created equal, but there are some general rules that we should abide by. So we're gonna start off going up to one of these machines. And first things first, before I touch it, I think it's definitely appropriate to wipe it down. So now you see a lot of people doing this at the gym that you go to where there's heavy equipment and benches, but it's just as important to wipe these things down when you're at a park for yourself and for the people who come after you. Let's be courteous of all of those around us and keep our gyms clean. So as you can see, it was actually pretty dirty, but now we're good, all clean, good to go. Now that we've cleaned the equipment, I think it's time we figure out how to use the equipment. So as a trainer, when I come to these gyms, I look at these machines and to be honest, they don't look like a lot of the stuff that you see in the gym. So that's why it's extra important we read the instructions before executing some of these exercises. So we're gonna take a look up here. It looks like it's showing us some examples of different exercises we can do. We have the dip, we have the assisted squat. I love the squat. We have some stretching you can do, some parallel pull-ups, some leg knee raises, and a chin pull-up. Pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. And since we are reading, we are keeping everything safe. As you can see, I'm here by myself. Sometimes it's crowded, sometimes it's not. This is probably not the place to try an upside down hanging sit-up. You're by yourself, follow the instructions, and keep it safe. And on that note, safety also comes down to making sure you are bringing your water and your towel. It is hot out here in South Florida. Be sure you are hydrating, you're wiping down your sweat, and you're wiping your hands so you're not slipping on any of these machines. Okay, so we've wiped it down. Now let's check out what this machine does. It looks like the instructions are saying it's your basic row machine. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna sit down, put my feet up, grab it right here, and then we are rowing it back. Wow, this feels pretty cool. I am liking this. So this is a great machine. I can see that it's pretty desirable at the park, which means that other people may want to use it too. So let's be mindful not to hog equipment, just like you would do in a regular gym. It's not nice to stay here texting on your phone. Look around, see if someone is kind of looking at the machine, maybe hinting if they want to get on. You can ask them, hey, you want to work in with me? Or maybe you adjust your workout, you go do something else, and you come back to it. And last, I want you to be mindful to wear proper gym attire. Maybe you're hanging out at Markham Park, you just came from a barbecue and you're in some flip-flops, you see the gym, you want to get in a few reps, but that is not going to be great on a machine like this. You want to be sure you have sneakers, and we are doing this safely, safety over everything. So as you can see, we got a little bit of rain in South Florida, but if you follow these simple rules, it'll make your park experience that much better. Take care of yourself, take care of your local park, and keep watching SoFlo Health. Joey, a quick question for you. If people want to get started in collecting and they come in here and they feel a little intimidated, what advice would you give them? Start looking in your own homes. All the toys that you have in your closets, mm -hmm. uh, in the basements, well, there's no basements in South Florida, but <laughs> and in the garages, <laughs> in, anywhere, the attic in the attic, mm -hmm. because those are your basic collectible starting grounds. Right. So video games, we all know about Nintendos, we all know about Segas, those are your one stick, because everybody's looking for video games right now. Mm -hmm. So that'll be your starting point from collectibles. If you're a collector in Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, mm -hmm. you will probably have these figures loose. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people will have them still in the card, but those are your, your stepping grounds that right. you could actually start looking, Googling them, mm -hmm. see what their value is, holding on to them. And then that's how you start base by base, by which kind of toys, video games, or any kind of era that you have at your home. Well, that's great. Thanks oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll keep looking around. Yeah. Keep watching SoFlo Health. Wouldn't it be nice to have a garden in your backyard, just like Butterfly World, where we are today? Well, good news for you. We have Amanda from Butterfly World to tell us how you can recreate this at home. Amanda, good to see you. Good to see you. Tell me, what is required for me to attract so many butterflies? Really, it's so simple. Is Plants. it? There's actually two main types of plants you need for butterfly gardening. The first is the host plant, and the second is nectar sources. So in this garden, we have a lot of nectar sources. 
This would be a really good one for powder puff. Wow. We also have some fire spike behind me over here. Mm -hmm. We have some porter weeds. All of these will feed the adult butterflies, but what you want also is host plants that will feed the baby butterflies or caterpillars. Okay, you have host plants over at the garden center for people to get. Yes, yes we do. Let's head over there. All right, great. Hey Amanda, I know we were just inside of the aviary, but now we're over in the garden center because this is where you would get plants at home if you wanted right. to create your own garden. Yes. And why are these particular plants important? So basically this is the first plant most beginners start with. Okay. Um, this is the milkweed. Milkweed will actually be the host plant for three different butterflies, but the most commonly known one is the monarch. The Monarch butterfly will come and lay its eggs underneath uh, one of these leaves, uh -huh. and it's really tiny, so it's hard to spot them at first, but once they grow up, they'll be these giant caterpillars that are black, white, and yellow, Okay. Um, and they'll kind of munch on those until they're ready to pupate, and then you'll find a chrysalis, and that is the stage right before right. they come out as a butterfly. I want to show you the passion vines as well. The passion vines? Yes. Well, let's head over there. All right. I'm trying to see if I can hear it through the passion vine. I'm in. <laughs> Tell me about the passion vine. Sure, so the passion vine, there's actually a lot of different species. Uh, this one in particular is a lavender lady, which is a hybrid. It'll still get you uh, some butterflies here. Basically, this is a host plant and they will also lay their eggs on that. So the more host plants you have, the more your garden will smell good to them and the more butterflies that will come. All right, well, thank you so much. I think I'm just gonna take this one. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and clearly we are not at way back when anymore, but I do appreciate the time we spent there. Joey, thank you so much for showing us around and giving us some tips for bargain hunting and how to begin collecting. I'm currently at a harbor somewhere in South Florida that has a restaurant serving up meals ready for a day on a boat. And guess what? They're healthy. But you'll have to watch next week because that's all we have for this week's episode of SoFlo Health. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlo Health on SoFloShows.com. You can follow us using at SoFlo Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. Until next week, it's goodbye and good health. Next week on SoFlo Health, you'll be in stitches. So you come up in the shared hole and you go down to the bottom left. Actually, I'll be stitching. Join us for this relaxing activity and exercises you can do to fix your forward neck posture. Dr. Sam has actually showed us in the past how to take care of our necks, but I have something that I've been doing. All of that and more are next week on SoFlo Health. We'll see you then.